first fighter being introduced right now, Max Branis, 23 years of age, nicknamed The Phoenix. 174 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 68 kilograms with a professional record of 51 fights, 30 victories, 9 losses and 2 draws. Returning to tie fight for the second time. And of course introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Petaksin Oya Sisaket or formerly known as Petaksin Pa Samran Chai. 22 years of age, 177 centimeters tall, from right here in Sisaket province. He's had a total of 98 fights, 65 victories, 30 losses, and three draws. It's gonna be nice for Pitaksin to be here, uh, right back here in Sisaket. Of course, he's serving right now in the Thai mi military as a sergeant. Yeah, and I, uh, I did say that Max Brannis was making his second appearance here at Thai Fight, first time it was earlier this year where he took on Senchai, and I've got to say he did a fantastic job. He did lose by decision, but it was relatively close. My it goodness, looked, the it, amount of people that came up to I me know. and said that Max Brannis <laughs> should have won that fight. It was very close, but Senchai did take it. I, I have to say so as well. Senchai definitely did take that fight. But here we are, our first fight of the evening. Petaksin versus Max Brannis. Yeah, good teeth there by Petaksin. Thailand versus Israel getting started early on. Oh, another good push kick there, but this time by Branis. Absolutely beautiful from the Israeli fighter. His timing is impeccable early on. Good hands there, off balance, but he did catch Max Branis with a few good right hands and jumps in with that elbow. Does pet packs in. Branis training out of powerhouse gym in Phuket. As you can see there, pet packs in was loading for an elbow, but not quite getting the timing right. Another right hand there from Pet Taxin, who's making his debut here at Thai Fight. Yeah, we've never seen Pet Taxin here at Thai Fight before. Correct. He's doing a very good job early on. Sometimes what they like to do is bring back a hometown hero. And Pet Taxin has got the nod here. The fans will be on his side, of course, but does that add some pressure? Oh, absolutely, but coming back into your hometown, as you said, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, what's going through his head right now? But <laughs> from what I've seen in the ring so far, he's doing a good job. Oh, sneaky right hand there from Branish. Yeah, Brian is a very technical fighter. He can be sneaky, but takes that kick over there once again. You know, when you fight in Sunshine, it's more about technique versus technique, but you can see right here, it's all about aggression. Is and he able to cope and keep up with Pet Taxin? Left kick to the body. Absolutely, and both fighters bring the aggression to the table, as you can see early on right here. And that's what the referees here on Thai Fight love. They love that aggression. They love fighters moving forward constantly and attacking. Another right kick to the body once again, and there's a few red markings on the left side of the body of Branis from all those right kicks. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons that... What's best way to say? And again, he, instead of blocking, he, he, he's trying to catch them instead. Now he's doing a good job blocking, but maybe he's taking too many kicks to the ribs early on. Yeah, quite right there. Oh, there's that teeth again. Flush. Fair to say, that was a little revenge there for Pentax. Then he took a, a few teeth to the face early on in the round. The mid midsection kick, to, and there's that right kick again. And like you said, he tried to catch it, and then he connects with the right high kick. Does Brannis warning shot there for Pet Taxin? Brannis is more than capable. Pet Taxin knows that he has to be very careful because fair, fair to say that Max Brannis has a lot of tricks up his sleeves. He's just that sort of fighter that I don't think Pet Taxin has watched him fight before. I think it's fair to say that. Of course, Max Brannis fought a lot in the tie circuit. For well, the Channel 8 circuit, and that's the end of the first round. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Sisaket province. Me and Aaron already have uh, felt some of the beautiful hospitality that Sisaket has to offer, the beautiful Isan hospitality. But in the ring, I think it's a very different story from uh, the local hole boy, Pitaksin, as you can see there, pushing Max Brannis in the face and connecting with all of uh, kicks to the ribs. Doing a very good job in the first round. Here we go to start off the second round, and once again the push kick to the face from the side fighter. Three out of three there, hat trick of push kicks from Pet Taxin. Brannis, one of his only cleanly shots has to have been that right head kick. I'm sure he's going to search for that one more time. He's just too many of those right kicks to the ribs right now. He's taking way too many shots. Surely his uh, quarterman have told him to defend himself in that regard. And again, a kick. And again. Even though Branis is catching it, it's hitting those ribs. 
the left side of Brandis's body. It's starting to look like a fire hydrant. And once again, another kick to the ribs. He needs to start blocking those, otherwise he's gonna have a bad time throughout the rest of the fight. Brandis still trying to move forward and now Pentaxi being the one waiting for the right timing and he does it once again. I mean, he is catching that kick, but then there's no counter at all. No, I mean, he's catching the kick and he's trying to throw some hands, and that hasn't worked for him throughout the fight. And I think we can credit that to Pentaxin's reach and how far his limbs go, really. Now going for the left kick, Pentaxin going for a right hand once again. Push kick there from Brax. And there's that kick one more time. I've really lost count of how many times Pentaxin has connected with that right kick. He's throwing it at will and it's connecting. Why would you not? Why would you change the game plan? If it's working, it's working. As for Max Brandis, though, he has to do a lot now. He can't keep taking all these shots from Pentaxin. We are inside here in Type Fight. There's a covered roof. It's quite hot. I don't know if that's going to play a part. Whether the uh, fight is going to get exhausted. Molly, a good right hand there from Pet Taxi. Oh, yeah, I mean, especially with, in the conditions here, it's extremely hot, as you said. It's definitely going to play a part. That's without a shadow of a doubt. Good low kick there from Max. Oh, good right hand from Pet Taxi once again. Max Bannis, his head just knocked right back. But he looks okay. But speaking of which, though, he's taking a lot of solid shots from Pentaxin. Doesn't seem to have faced him a lot. Going up with a clinch now, the fighter in the black corner going for Pentaxin. End of round two. Here we go, coming into the final round of our, third, our first bout of the evening. Of course, Pentaxin in the black corner and Max Branis in the white corner. Taking a look at some of the action there from the previous round. And that right kick still connecting, still finding his way home. Oh, that was a beautiful right hand. The chin though from Max Brandis. He's taken a lot of shots from this fight so far. He's remained on his feet. It's a sign of a fighter who's definitely been training very well. Maxine is up right now and I think unofficially if Brandis wants to take this fight, he's going to have to find something special and knock out Pet Taxin. Definitely not going to be easy. He's thrown some of the hardest shots he can. But of course, the tie still remains on his feet and still attacking. Oh, beautiful left knee there from Pet Taxin. Don't think we've seen too many knees so far in this fight. <laughs> maybe the first, in fact. Max Brand is trying to take it to the clinch. But maybe that is favorite Pet Taxin instead. Of course, Pet Taxin is a multiple time amateur Muay Thai champion. Good, good block there from Brandis as uh, Pet Taxin threw that right leg. Now the right kick there from the fighter in the black corner, Pentaxin, as Brandis continuously tries to move forward and he has to do exactly just that. He might have caught Pentaxin with an elbow that time as well as he moved in. Oh, whatever he catches Pentaxin with, he has to throw everything, including the kitchen sink at him. Oh, Beautiful. good push kick. Yeah, to the face once again. Brandis, look at that elbow, catches him with the right. Beautiful right elbow there from Pentaxin, sorry, from uh, Max Brandis. Very good job from Max Brandis applying the pressure, but he has to continuously do that. He wants to get something out of this fight. Going for another elbow, but gets clinched up once again by Pentaxin. Brandis having a decent round right here. Oh, absolutely. His corner definitely told him that he has to do something special. And he's trying to do exactly that. Another left elbow there and connects from Brandis. Good knees. Doing a very good job on the inside, but we just see Brandis trying to knee Pentaxin in the head. I think he tried. <laughs> And why the not? Clinch at close range. Absolutely amazing what we're seeing from Rex Brandis right now. And he's definitely taking this round from the looks of it. Good knees there from Brandis. He did eat a right hand, but didn't seem to phase him at all. Constant pressure, constant forward movement. Great round from Rex Brandis so far. Good push kick. Pet Taxi and happy to be on the back foot. Brandis is going to have to throw something here. He's moving forward. Looking for those knees and elbows. And he's got Pentaxin on the ropes multiple times. 
from the last fight that we've seen Max Brennan, we're used to seeing him fighting slow pace and taking his time. But this is working out for him so far. Maybe he should have started the fight in this style. Pet Taxi looks exhausted. Look up there from Brannis. Push kick. End of the third and final round. We will go to the judges' scorecards. Great fight to start. The winners! Pet Lux in Oyasu Well, it's a worrisome third round of Pet Taxi. All right, Pet Taxi Saket, your winner. First round, first, first bout here at Thai Fight Saket. Stay with us for more action. Don't go anywhere. Mohamed Khalil coming goes all the way from Oslo in Norway. 28 years of age, 170 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 69 kilograms. He holds a professional record of 64 fights with 40 victories, 20 losses, and four draws. He is a two-time Norwegian Muay Thai champion. Now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Falikit Lukmahathat. His former name, people might know him as Papayap Kwai Tong Jim. His real name, of course, is Somchai Tungong. 28 years of age, 174 centimeters tall from Ratchaburi province. Has a total of 202 fights, 161 victories, 36 losses, and 5 draws. Of course, for those who may have seen Papayap Kwai Tong Jim, he's... Um, was very famous at Mochip Sta Stadium a few years ago, and he's fought, fought some left way as well. And it shows by his uh, training partner. He's been training with um, Tan Min Lat, who we'll see later on tonight take on Teng Lin Sit Jai Rule. So he's very familiar with the left way fans, the fans of Myanmar, that is. And also the fact that he won't be wearing gloves. <laughs> and uh, I think that suits him just fine. Of course, Muhammad Khalil, we've seen here, him here in uh, Thai Fight before. This is his fourth fight. Last three haven't been successful, so maybe he's looking for his first victory here tonight in Cease again. Here we go. Round one. A very slow paced start, you could say, from the two fighters, but I don't think it will last for long. Going with a huge right hand already, or a huge left hand already, by the kid. Yeah. Khalil also headhunting with that right hand. Here comes Farlikit, oh my goodness! Jumping left kick, but... Just a slip there though Just for a slip, Khalil. Yes. Farlikit still continues to move forward. Seems like it's a style that he's absolutely loves. Another good left hand there, and a left hook from Farlikit, and another left hook! Enjoying seems... himself in there! Yeah, it seems like whenever Khalil wants to move forward, he wants to take oh, the jump off, and no. there's the first knockdown of the fight, and I think that's it! I could be it! Well, he can't, can't get up, it'd be a it's knockout a, victory. It's a, he he crumpled him with that left hand. My goodness, you blink oh, once and you miss it, and that's exactly what happened there. Dangerous times here. That left hand is like a piston. More left hands coming in there from Farlikin. Mohamed Khalilo still fighting back. Such heart, such determination from the Oh, let's go for that time. Knees to the body. Khalil still on wobbly legs. Tiki taking deep breaths in. He's got to admire the heart of Muhammad Khalil, but is he doing the right thing by constantly moving forward? Takes the voice shots to the shin there. Falikin with extraordinary composure in that exchange there. Another left hand to the body that time from Falikin. Oh, that's the hand there. Acknowledged by Falikin as well. Could Falikin be tired right now? You can see him taking some very heavy breaths. Good kick to the body again. 
from Khalil. Nice knee there from Bartley Kid, who's on the back foot right now. Just taking his time, isn't he? Waiting for another opening. But Khalil's done great. There's that left hand again. Khalil going in with an elbow recklessly. Takes the knee to the body as well from Balakit. Balakit was more in the back foot now, but maybe he's just taking his time, just taking his breath. He started off very aggressively. Good hands there for Balakit, but Kevin, I think you're right. I think Carly, look at, look at, look at the, the, the way that he's throwing those hands. It's completely different to what we saw earlier. Oh, but now it goes. And that's it, that's it, the it's referee calls it. I'll have to see a highlight of that. I didn't exactly see what connected with. Was it another left hand? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. but it's fair to say that Khalil definitely saw a problem early on. The KO shot. See, it's, I thought it deflected off the arm of Khalil. Was it the knee that did? No. Not quite sure what happened there. Maybe the problem with the shoulder. Let's have a look once again. I saw him holding onto the shoulder. Oh, well, that was earlier. Do you think it was a delayed reaction from that initial, from the initial shot I there? think there may be some problems with the shoulders. You can see him with, oh, with, when he went down. He started pointing to it. Could be a broken nose with that shot as well. Yeah, it looks like he's rebroken. But this is the shot that finished him off. I wonder if it was just behind the ear and just destroyed his equilibrium. Could be. Yeah. Then the knee to the body for good measure. But yeah, he keeps showing the replay of that uppercut. Oh, and I'm guessing that is where he's rebroken the nose. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, I mean. it's a mess right now. The winners! Peba Sun and Jambu Falikin Lu Mahata! There you can see standing in the ring the imposing figure of Alex Bublia, otherwise known as the Ulfinden. Is that a character from The Witcher? Is that correct? I think so much. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> 33 years of age from Romania, but also resided in England for a long time. 181 centimeters tall. Despite taking place at 70 kilograms with a professional record of 98 fights, 67 victories, 30 losses, and one draws. 2012 ISK Southern Champion, 2016 Raw Combat League World Champion, 2018 WMC I1 International Champion, trains out of PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. And now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Nong O Shohapaya. His real name is Adisad. Of course, Nong O, he is a northern Thailand champion. And if you've just joined us, this is Thai Fight Sisaket. Part of the purpose of this event is to raise funds for the Sisaket People's Association, which will go to causes and ultimately benefit the people of Sisaket. I should also mention that all the fighters today, Thai and foreign, have been checked for COVID-19 by the Department of Medical Sciences. I should also mention that Chang Beverage, one of our main sponsors, will give 100,000 baht to anyone if you can knock out your opponent by a spinning back kick. To the head. <laughs> to the head, <laughs> We always miss that part out. Could never forget that. And so far, we haven't seen anyone do that here at Type 5, but who knows, it might happen here tonight. I'm excited for this one. Absolutely, it's it. The no, WMO no. has uh, non goal ranked as number four in the world. Probably around 20, I believe. Yeah, not all he's fought in Type 5 four times and has won by stoppages four times. But I think it's fair to say that Alex Bubli is probably his most strongest opponent. Bubli is an interesting one. He can take punishment. And he never seems to get knocked out in all the times that we've seen him fight. Oh, and absolutely. even at a tie fight. And we've seen him maybe knocked down in knocked the first down, round. Yes, and then but, but comes back and wins the in, fight. Exactly. Been around the Muay Thai Sea for a long time now. Oh yes, whether it's in Romania, in England, or in Thailand. For the rest of the world really. And the part heavy shots that are coming in from Nong Oh Shohapia. I believe he used to train out of the Nosley Academy. So shout out to Liam Nolan and uh, Jonathan Haggerty. He trained out of there. And, right and he, now, fought, he actually fought on Thai Fight London in about oh, 2016, maybe 17. <laughs> 
some years ago now. Yes. And of course, he's training out of PK Sunshine Muay Thai Gym right now. So a shout out to Mr. Tunta Tenrung Run or Sia Game, as we all call him. Nice up got there from Nongo. Then walks into a left hand. But we told you, Bumblea can take shots. Yeah, he can definitely take shots. And he's almost like a, a drunk at a speed. He starts off slow, but when he gets started, you can't stop him. Well, speaking of this weight division, 70 kilograms, one of the men at the top of that is Tawan Chai. And if Bumblea has been training with him or practicing with him, then that will put him in good stead. You know, I've seen a lot of legends go to the PK Sunshine Muay Thai gym lately, especially Sabat Priyakarod and uh, Sobran Kam Singh, in fact. Maybe that's a confidence booster for Alexandra Bublé. No, not go again. Head chasing, looking for that right hand. You know, Nongo, he seems to do everything right as an athlete. A lot of fighters in, in, in the back, you, you would see them eating a full meal, eating some rice. Oh, good luck up there from Nongo. Eating some uh, minced, minced beef or minced pork. But uh, you see Nongo, he's, he's eating a, he's always eating a protein bar or uh, drinking a protein shake. Or eating iron by the looks of it. <laughs> good luck is there from the Thai fighter. And dishing out iron as well. Some heavy shots there once again from Nongo Sahapayak, cornering Google. End of round one. Good display of Muay Thai from both fighters there. Stay with us here. Taking a look at some of the replays there from the first round. Nong Oh, of course, with some huge and heavy shots. Bublé also still fighting back, but we'll see on the back foot. Yeah, it's interesting to see Bublé just be able to decide to step onto the back foot and try and counter Nong Oh. Yeah, once the round was over, you could see that uh, Bublé just uh, gave a thumbs up there to his corner, saying everything's okay. Don't worry, I've got the situation under control. I think he fought Sayot the last time we saw him on Tag Fight. He was a close fight as well, yeah. fair to say. Yeah, this more technical. And that's down to Bublia. Good Here body shot. To the second oh. round and Nongo going for the Haymakers early on. My goodness, Nongo just wants the knockout. Well, it's four victories, four KOs so far in the young career of Nongo. He's looking to add a fifth and again looking for that right hand. Absolutely how, absolutely love how Nongo just tries to hunt for the head. A beautiful elbow, that counter elbow from Bublé. But like we said, Bublé is no slouch. <laughs> Absolutely not. Definitely one of the more tougher opponents that Nongo has faced in a long time. Going for some huge and heavy shots, but Nongo fires back. Actually, at the third or fourth time we saw Nongo, he actually did get dropped with a flying knee out of nowhere. I mean, he picked himself right back up, but... Yeah, that's what the referee did on count. I mean, if you don't show any signs of he is susceptible. He is susceptible the way that he throws those hooks. He keeps his guard very wide, very open. So of course, what we know from Nongo as well is that he can take shots. He can take really heavy shots. Absolutely. Especially from what we've seen in this fight against Gong Dai in that Thai fight Lafang that was. Oh, so trying to push forward, but a beautiful right hand there from Bublé. That's very good. through the clinch. Yeah, Nongo showing a little bit of frustration right now. Yeah, he's almost frustrated that Bublé doesn't seem to be hurt from any of his shots so far, even though he's thrown the hardest shots he could possibly throw. He's also keeping a quite a good guard as well. Almost struggling in the clinch there, Nongo. I think he did stay after the last time he fought Patrick, but it's his favorite style of Muay Thai. Just to show the mentality. Oh, another elbow coming in there from Nongo. Yeah, it's absolutely fair to say that Nongo actually loved the Kachuk side and, and, the, and here in Thai fight it suits him just fine. Oh, still getting pushed again. back. You know, usually by the second round we see Bublé getting started away with some heavy shots. We haven't seen it just yet. Good knee there from Nongo but again Bublé is able to move out of the way of the big hammer shot. Beautiful right kick there from the one. He blocked the low kick as well. Very good coordination from him. Oh, good left hand there from, from Bublé. And then a solid right to the body from Nongo. Oh, what a fight we have here. Absolutely phenomenal. How could both fighters be fighting at this pace? It's incredible. Good Make shot there from Bublé. Just when you thought that he was caught on the ropes. End of round two. What an incredible second round that was, just filled with action. Let's take a look at some of the action we saw for the, for the second round. Some huge 
haymakers thrown from Dong early on, but of course some beautiful counters coming in from Alexander Bruglia as well. Really thrown those low kicks, but with a block by Dong Ho. With those hooks coming in from Dong Ho, any of them could have caused a knockout, but of course, as we know, Alex Bruglia got an incredible chin, and so does Dong Ho. I've noticed that a few times when Nongo comes in with those wild haymakers. But Blair's trying to counter with those elbow strikes as he moves in. All right, here we go. Third and final round of what's been a really intriguing and great matchup. Oh, fantastic. It's one of those matches that, even though we're only oh, in the third round, has rematch written beautiful. all over it. Some heavy shots again from both fighters in fact. Oh. Good player swinging as well. So amazing exchanges and no more trying to go for the knockout as he has done for the last two rounds. Both fighters with tremendous chins. Oh my goodness, what a start to the round. And Nongo really wants to go home early. I don't know why. Maybe there's a cab waiting for him outside. Who knows? Again, you can see Bobea looking for that elbow. Nongo, of course, trading out of the famous Cho Hap reaction. Where one of the trainers there is uh, Wang, Wang Chang Noi. A lot of people may know Wang Chang Noi as the 30 second knockout man. Beautiful combinations there for Burglia. One, two, falls it over the leg kick. Exceptional work here from the Romanian. But imagine what uh, Nongo's corner has been telling you. Maybe just go in there and raise it all up. Try to knock your opponent out. Throw as many punches as you can. See, for the first time, we're seeing that Nongo is a little bit hesitant. A big elbow there from Nongo, though. Probably maybe have to start applying the pressure. There's that left hook, but another low kick. Good body shot there from Bublia. Here comes Nongo once again. Every single time we see Bublia here in the tie fight ring, he's always impressed. And now he's impressed, he's impressing us by the amount of heavy shots he's able to take and his countering has just been superb, but to get someone like Nongo, you gotta do a lot more. Oh! Swinging left hand! Out of nowhere, Bublia goes down! My goodness, I don't think... Is he gonna get back? He deserves to, to win the fight it's, on his feet. He really deserves it. It's been a long time it. since I've seen Bublia knocked down in the third round. Some incredible shots there thrown in by Nongo, who still has Unbelievable. knockout power. Unbelievable, gets up and throws a combination and hits it with a leg kick. Just by the way, the fight was going, I didn't think Google would go down at all. Oh, what, an, what an amazing heart he's got though. Absolutely incredible. But of course, when you try to trade shots against someone like Nongo, you might have a really bad time. Nongo going to the clinch and getting the back of Google. Definitely going to work in uh, his favor for the judges if uh, what he's done so far is, isn't. And a big right hand there from Dong Ho Cho Hap Yap. End of the third and final round. An amazing fight. We will go to the judges. And the first time Dong Ho has gone all three rounds on time fight. I'm clapping. The audience is clapping. Oh, absolutely. Devastating shot there. Left hook, the drop for Blair, right on the button. The defining moment of the fight, to be honest. Oh, there it is again. Straight on the nose. But for Blair, with that heart of his. The Time for the ladies in the white corner. Plyfa saw Nitea 
27 years of age from Buriram province here in Thailand, not too far away. 165 centimeters tall with a professional record of 80 fights, 50 victories, 28 losses and two draws. This fight taking place at 53 kilograms and is the only female fight of the evening. And now introducing my first opponent in the black corner representing the Kayan people in Myanmar, Vero Valrujiawong. 25 years of age, 164 centimeters tall, has a total of 33 fights, 14 victories, two losses, and 17 draws. Of course, this match here is in fact a rematch. These two have fought before in Myanmar under leftway rules. Vero taking the victory by KO in the second round, in fact. Maybe Play Fire will want a little bit of redemption from this fight. Yeah, Vero recognized as one of the best fighters at 53 kilograms and she's been running right here since joining Thai fight. Oh, that's without a shadow of a doubt. I think she's had maybe four fights here as well and four victories. Only one of them going um, to the very end. That was against Angela Chang. Yeah, trains out of Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket. Shout out to uh, our mutual friend Johnny Betts. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, maybe from the previous fight, Johnny Betts may have wanted to teach uh, Vero some of that clinching that he's very well known for. Might see some of it here tonight. Fourth bout of the evening here at Thai Fight Sisaket. The fourth card check of card check fight of the evening. There is nine fights. Eight of them are card check. The gloves, of course, reserved for Sanchai. Yep, the gloves always reserved for Sanchai. I mean, it's there sitting on a pen pedestal in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and Vera started the things off very early. Such action. Looking for those elbows. Fly Fire was looking for a left high kick, but Vero having none of it. But that's exactly what we see from a Vero fight each time. She always wanted to start the fight off early, oh, and that's exactly what she's doing right left, here. Left hook out of nowhere, stuns Fly Fire. He's now backed into the corner because he's not where he wants to be. She's holding on for dear life. Vero seems like she's very adamant to break her record for the previous fight against Fly Fire. And Fly let alone in, in her own home country. Yeah, Fly Fire looks in a little bit of trouble here. A beautiful piece there from like early on. Well, Vero's just going to jump in and attack. Oh, could be another left elbow. Blyfar looking for those knees. Maybe what Blyfar needs to do is clinch up Vero, leave her no space to attack. It worked very well for Angela Chang in the previous fight. So, why not Blyfar do the exact same thing? See Vero there going in with those hooks after a good left high kick attempt from Blyfar. Again, Vero's gonna just walk it down. Watch out for that left high kick again. Oh, left hand. Body shot of a roll there from Vero. That left hand stunned Blyfar. Blyfar could be in trouble here. Blyfar doing a very good job, still on her feet, but in the corner where it's very dangerous to get someone like Vero. Blyfar's corner telling her to throw an elbow. She does exactly just that. Almost connected with the first one, but missing with the second. And you can see right away, Vero doesn't want to be the clinch at all. She's trying to, let's put it this way, avoid it at all costs. Trying to go for a side kick there, fly far. Yeah, she walks into another right hand that time. Trying to go for a kick there, but just missing. Fly far, she needs to really time her kicks much better than that. And again, trying to tie up Vero, end of round one. Well, an interesting round there. Vero, obviously the aggressor of the two. And Blyfire was momentarily locked right there, but she got herself together and she was able to tie Vero up on a number of occasions and deliver some good knees. Vero, I do believe, won the round, but having it all her own way. And yeah, there are some times where Blyfire had her moments, especially within the clinch. True, a couple of good left high kicks as well that almost caught Vera as she was rushing in. Blyfar definitely really wants his victory, especially after the last time they fought. Not sure if you saw that on the camera, but uh, the corner man for, <laughs> for Vero having a hard time getting out of the ring and staying in the ring as well. My goodness. Round two, here we go. Oh, beautiful body shot. Perfectly timed. And down goes Blyfar. 
Thinks he's going to get him. Oh, oh, trying to tell him to get up. Oh, what a celebration there from Vero. At the shot that did it. We might need to rewind the tape just a little bit there if you're listening in the truck. I don't care who you are oh, and how you build, no matter what, that's going to hurt you. Sternum shot. Red basket. And that's all she wrote. This is a better angle. Oh! That'll sap all the air out of your body. My goodness. I tell you, anybody, anybody in the world would go down for that shot. Apart from Bublaya. <laughs> Impressive once again, congratulations to Tiger Muay Thai and of course to the Queen of Thai Fight, Vero for Ruggiero Wong. And the winner is Vero Ruggiero Wong! Yeah! Thank you very much! Oh, no, 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 no. มาทัดเตรียมเธอตอนนี้นะสำหรับมวยหญิงนี่ยากมากเหมือนกันนะตอนนี้ยากมากแต่ว่าถ้าเธอไม่เห็นนะต้องชมจิตใจของปลายฟ้าว่าปลายฟ้าก็สู้แบบเต็มที่ไม่โกรธจริงครับ I am very excited about this fight. There you can see in the white corner, Elise Corkesi, 26 years of age with a professional record of 39 fights, 28 victories. 11 losses and zero draws. He is 26 years of age. Originally born out of Haiti in Port-au-Prince, then moved to Germany and now, of course, resides in Thailand. And now introducing his opponent fighting on the black corner, Sayo Pumpanmuang. His real name is Sakna Niemhom. He's 38 years of age, 173 centimeters tall from Pisanalok province. That has a total of 329 fights. 278 victories, 49 losses, and two draws. And of course, Sayok, what a list of honors he has. Rajanana champion, Thailand champion, Lupini champion, WMC champion, Thai fight champion, 2014. Of course, Isuzu super... Isuzu cup super fight champion. <laughs> Never distinguish between them two sometimes. Yeah. Isuzu cup tournament fight, Isuzu cup super fight. <laughs> I'm not sure, anyways. This is gonna be an amazing matchup. It's gonna be an absolute war for those who haven't seen Elezi, Kokesi before, absolutely amazing the way he fights. He really is. He's done really well on the Muay Thai scene, Channel 8, Super Champ, um, Vertex Fight Promotion as well. I think yeah, he won by Stadium. There. Lumpini. He's a big guy, big dude. I can't remember the last time I've seen him lose, or I can't remember seeing him lose at all. Yeah. Trains out of uh, Powerhouse in Phuket. We're expecting big things for this fight. When we first noticed the fight sheet, the fight card, this was the one that stood out to us. Oh, absolutely, and it stood out to many Muay Thai fans all around the world. Just waiting for this one. So, he did move up to like 74, 75 kilograms, but now he's back down to 72, and he's starting to chop people down like we saw, what, 10 years ago? It's been very impressive. Just missing with the hook there. Beautiful evasion there from Elizzi. White kick there from Elezi once again, and Elezi putting his combinations together quite well. For that body shot. Good, good footwork, lift, yeah, good footwork though from Elezi, who's uh, using that left hook and then moving out of the way. Trying to tie up Sayok, go for some clinch work. Maybe not the best thing to do because, as we know, Sayok, he loves being in the short range and he loves to throw that elbow. At least he's quick, putting those combinations together. And, and look, look at that footwork, he's not stop moving. Circling the ring. And as soon as Sayok gets close, left kick to the body, sorry, right kick to the body, to the left side of Sayok. And then as he moves to the left oh. as well. Good right hand, then a left by Sayok. Of course, he's moving to the left, knowing that that's Sayok's power side, let's put it that way. Whether it's left hand or left kick, Sayo could knock out anybody with that. Elizzi though doing a good job with his footwork. As you can see, moving to the left each moment. Sayo throws any sort of combination. Like we said, Elizzi's is turning heads here in Thailand, but this by far is his biggest test. There's no, there's no doubt about it whatsoever. And of course, the Thai fighting team have seen Elizzi fight elsewhere and know that he is the right opponent for Sayo here tonight. 
couple of tight fights ago, we saw Sayon take on Jordan Watson. We thought that was going to be a fairly even fight, but Sayon took it to Jordan on that night. It wasn't to be, but this is what Ellis is doing right now, making it a close fight, making it a close first round for Sayon. You've got to say he's doing very well in there right now. Oh! More of a slip there. Get off balance though, Elise. Yeah, he, he gets up fast, and that's why the referee did not count. So you get Sayop happy to chase, and Elise happy to be on the back foot, frustrating Sayop. Yeah, but doing a lot better now, Sayop, after getting almost what could have been a knockdown. <laughs> nice right hand there for Elise at the end of the round. Good solid round. Stay with us here at Tight Fight Sisake. What a great first round that was between these two behemoths. Of course, Sayo Pupubong in the black corner and Elise Kokesi in the white corner. Let's take a look at some of the shots that were thrown in the first round. Both fighters with some very heavy shots. It, was, it went back and forth, didn't it? But It really did, but towards the end of that first round, you got to give it to Sayo. Sayo just had that more determination. It seemed to have figured out Elise towards the end. And that could have been a knockout or a knockdown in another day. But of course, Elise got up very fast. Yeah, Caucasian. But if he wants to try and take it to Saiki, if, if he wants to try and win this fight here at Tai Fight, you have to go head to head at some point in the fight. And Sayoko already starting strong with a huge jab to start things off. Now just chasing down Elise. Beautiful leg kick there from the Tai Fighter. And some huge combinations. Hand combinations there from Sayok, and Elezi trying to fight back now. Oh, gets caught with a one-two combination. Caucasian's tough, he's got a chin on him, man. Oh, absolutely. Sayok says, you're still a young man, you don't want to trade blows with me. And that's exactly why. But Caucasian, 26 years of age, Sayok, 38 now. Huge experience from Sayok. Looking for that textbook left elbow. One of the patented attacks that Sayok looks to employ. Nice left kick there from Sayok. Ripping. Outside thigh shot. There's a little nick under the right eye of Fukesi. After those punch exchanges we saw. I mean, we, we, we love to talk about his footwork. He's doing a very good job of moving to Sayok's right side. But at the same time, he's really got to get this match started. He's really got to start moving forward. Oh! And a knockdown! Sayok gets knocked out. He needs to go to a neutral Beautiful corner now. Right. Caucasian, Sayok is down! My goodness, Blinkett, you've missed it. Expect the unexpected here on Thai Fight. Caucasian now moving in for the kill. Is Sayok he gonna, looks he's like gone. he's in a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's blood or the dyed hair pouring down his face. There's got to be a little bit of blood there. Caucasian moving in for the kill. Sayok, he's still wobbling his legs. Caucasian can finish this. Star in the making, boys and girls. You could be witnessing history right now. Oh, absolutely amazing. No one expected that, except maybe Elise himself, who's extremely confident right now, making Sayok miss. Stunning elbow from Caucasia. Silence the crowd. Get to the body from Caucasia. Still got to be wary of Sayok, though, as he comes back with a flurry of punches. He eats another elbow. Sayok moving forward. Caucasian catches him with an uppercut. That is a right hook there for Sayok. Oh, and the fans have come back to life again. Sayok not giving up. Sayok continuously moving forward. Caucasian maybe in a long time right now. Oh, and what a beautiful body shot. Right hook, left body kick. Right hand from Sayok, left elbow. Sneaky left elbow there. Caucasian doing such a great job staying on his feet. Another digging right hook to the body there from Sayok. He is chasing this fight! Absolutely amazing! Did not expect this to happen at all! You see this blood coming from the mouth of Sayo, but that elbow must have caught him. Right there! Sayo for another body shot! Kokesi wraps up Sayo! Kokesi wants the, the end of the round to come now, I think it's fair to say. Another swing and left out from Sayo! Body shots galore! Caucasi holds on. And round two. What a round, Stunning my round. goodness. That's why we love Boy Tai. Nothing I can say more than 
what an extraordinary round we just witnessed there. Of course, Sayong early on coming in with a huge and heavy shot. Of course, afterwards, Elise, it was an elbow out of nowhere, was it? Right there, and that's oh. the one that knocked Sayong down. Coming out of absolutely nowhere, it looked like Elise was in danger there. But beautifully timed. But not in Elise world. One of the things I've noticed about Corkezi is that he never drops his head. It's always held high. Always looking at what his opponents are doing. Never covering up, really. Oh, and that's exactly what you have to do when you're fighting someone like Sayok. Can you see that? Even when Sayok's throwing, he still puts his head high. You can see the shots coming. And I'm not sure if you hear the crowd here. Instincts again, but they're really rallying behind Sayok, hoping to get something out of this fight. Let's look at it this way. 10-9 to Sayok first round, yep. unofficially. 10-8 to Caucasian second round, unofficially. If Sayok wins this round, we could be going to a fourth round. Oh, exactly. That, <laughs> that could happen. Caucasian coming in very hard, though. Sayok trying to, try to figure out his ancient German opponent. Beautiful left kick there from Sayok Kumpa Blum. Caucasian once again on the back foot, trying to throw some shots, but receives oh, the shot with a beautiful there. elbow there. Stunning from Caucasian. Timing it to perfection. Oh, another left shot to the chin though of Kokesi. Once again, another good left kick there from Sayo. Kokesi though taking another right kick and some more shots. Great oh. combinations there from Sayo pushing the Haitian German fighter back. You can see that Sayo was trying to go to the body, but I think he was a little bit off balance that time. Some more big shots there from Sayo, but Kokesi takes it really well. Beautiful shots there from Kokesi once again, but he's on the back foot. You see again, even when Sayok moves forward for Casey, if he can find one shot, shot, just one shot, he'll take that opportunity. But the shot to the body, to the legs. Oh, little left up there from Sayok, and a body shot with that leg. Wow, how, how do you call this fight? How in the world do you call this fight? It's been absolutely amazing so far, just full of action, even in the middle of the third round here. Beautiful left kick there from Sayok. Once again, if Kokesi maybe he's lining up an elbow, elbow, and he does. Good elbow again there from Kokesi. I think he's winning the round, to be honest, right now, Kevin. He's had some beautiful counters. And again, counter shot. Deep to the body. This corner Italian just keeps teeping, keeps Ike away. Easier said than done. Oh my goodness. I don't think we've seen anyone trouble Sayok this much uh, for a long time. Since Janajon probably knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> There again, Caucasian with that left hand, just moving away, spinning away from Sayok's left elbow. Well, maybe Kevin Solomani, but, no, but he didn't knock Sayok out, did he? And Lazy Caucasian does exactly just that, and now he's moving forward. Maybe Sayok getting a little bit tired here. He is, he's looking tired. He's doing everything he can <laughs> on Lazy, and Lazy counters back once again. Another left hook there. Oh, good left hand from Sayok! Solid body shot. And a good elbow there from Sayo. He's like, elbow in the inside. It looks absolutely exhausted right here out on his feet. Oh, again, yes, Caucasian with that elbow. And the footwork to move away from Sayo. He's definitely done his homework on Sayo. Very good job for the powerhouse Puket team. Oh, left hand from Sayo. There's some blood coming from the mouth from Caucasian after that vicious. Left hand! You know what, this could go to a fourth round. Remember, there are no draws here at Tie Fight. If it is deemed a draw, we'll go to one more round. Has Sayo done enough to win the round? We believe, we unofficially believe he won the first round. Has he done enough to win the third and take it to a fourth? We're about to find out, folks. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what the judges say, but many may think that Sayo has done enough in that third round to redeem himself. 10-8 Caucasian, 10-9 Sayo, we go to a four. But whether the tie fight judges agree with me or not, we'll see. I have to agree with you, but again, we're not judges. We just hear the call of fight, so let's call the replay for that third round. Beautiful left hand there from Sayo, he's done very good on the inside. You know what, not an easy round to score. Oh, absolutely not. Because we thought Caucasian was doing well, but Sayo, he found the target on a lot of occasions in that round. What an amazing chin there from the German Haitian fighter as well, taking so many shots and dishing out many shots as well. Just like that. Oh, it's going to be very exciting to see. 
Sayo, and the judges score this one. Sayo, thinks, Sayo thinks he's done enough to turn the fight around. And then Lizzie thinks he's done enough to win. Maybe they're both wrong. The winner! Just before we introduce the fighters, should we clear something up about the last fight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to make it clear is that if a fighter gets knocked down, they only get one point deducted. Of course, not like in professional boxing that we see or a five round Muay Thai, where um, it, it's, it's scored as a 10-8. But of course, in a three round fight, it's scored as a 10-9, in fact, yeah. yeah. So, Elise won the second round, 10-9. And Sayok, I assume... <laughs> I assume he won the first and the third, that's right. the first and the third, exactly. All right, boys and girls, moving on to our sixth bout of the evening. Lee Ritty in the ring already, 30 years of age from Cambodia, 182 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 67 fights, 53 victories, 10 losses, and four draws. And now introducing his opponent, finding out the black corner, he goes by the name of Sutsakon Sokdin Mi. His real name is Somklin Mi, 35 years of age, 182 centimeters tall, from Pattaya City, Thailand. He has a total of 320 fights, 235 victories, 42 losses, and three draws. Of course, Sutsakon Sokklin Mi is the first ever Thai fight catch-up champion, winning that back in 2013 by beating Sayong Pupamung in the final. You can tell a lot of fans are excited for this one here. So it's like, or no matter where we go, a lot, a lot of women are excited about this. Oh, fight, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll hear the screams all the way back to his hometown in Pattaya. <laughs> Axe kick straight away there from Sutsakon. A very interesting start there oh. from Sutsakon. So can be against his Cambodian opponent, Lee Ritty. Lee Ritty fighting out of the top stadiums back in Cambodia. Now gets to show his skills here in the Thai fight ring. Fight taking place at 75 kilograms. Sutsukhan looking fresh. Oh, not that time though, we got caught with the right hand just over the ear. Trying to throw Lee Ritchie down like you like to do with many other opponents. Lee Ritchie standing his ground though. Inside kick there from Ritchie. And then looking for that right hand again. It's been a while since we've seen an opponent um, have a reach advantage against Sutsukhan. Yeah, it's possible. Lee Ritty may cause some problems here for Sutsakorn. Beautiful kick there from Lee Ritty. Ritty trying to tie, sorry, Sutsakorn trying to dry up Ritty there. It's a nice elbow though, thrown by Sutsakorn so good me. As he's still in the back foot, Lee Ritty doing a good job walking down Sutsakorn. Yeah, he's looking relaxed. Right hand there from Sutsakorn, but Ritty return fire. And just a nice knee to top that one off. You've got to say, Lee Ritty's been absolutely impressive so far in this fight. I'm always super involved, my goodness. Almost yeah. knocked himself down there, Lee Ritchie, trying to go for some sort of Superman punch. Well, it's almost like an Irish whip there from Sutsuko. <laughs> <laughs> some wrestling references there from Aaron. Oh, good right hand there from Sutsuko, and then a good elbow. Ritchie walks into that one. you got to admire Lee Ritchie for staying on his feet for that one. He took some heavy shots from Sutsuko. I've always been an admirer of Sutsuko's leg kicks as well. He's got tree trunk legs. Oh, there it is again, that one-two. Ritty, an open target right now. Oh, but lately I've been a huge fan of Sutsakorn's hands. It's, it's improved so much ever since he's been with Eggapop. Oh, again. Right hand goes in then with the left. Now Ritty in the corner, receiving again, it. Two again. right hands in a row. Three and right hands, four oh. right hands. And the referee may have no option but to count. Lee Ritty has a hard time getting up to his feet. Bambi on ice. Ritchie's just gotta, just gotta use that eight count and try and compose himself, but Sutsukon's gonna move in for the kill! Another big right hand there for Sutsukon, and a huge elbow there! Lee Ritchie on one of his legs, but clinches up, tries to buy himself some time. Another rule here at Thai Fight, if you knock down three times, if one, over the course of the fight, that's it. The ref will call it. Oh, he's punched drunk right now, I don't know how he's staying on his feet! Uppercut, right hand, elbow, Sutsukon! Almost fighting for pride now, Lee Ritty. 
He's dazed, he's confused. There's something that's keeping Lee Ritchie in this fight. I don't know what that is. Strong legs and a, and a heart. And that's another the referee. Oh, the referee's called it. He's done the right thing there. Lee Ritchie looked out of him since the first knockdown. Enough damage was taken. Ritchie was on the legs, like Kevin said. Sutsukor moved in for the kill. The referee made the right decision. Congratulations. Sutsukor saw a clean move. The highlight being the knockdown. Oh, the knockdowns. Right hands. That was the initial one. But when he got back up, he was struggling to stay up. And the referee. There it is, that left up to the body. And then a right hand. And the referee. Tyref, some of the best in the world. You could see that he was in no condition to continue. Sutsukon slays another fighter here at Thai Fight. Stay with us, folks. Still to come, PTT, Deng Nung, and then of course, Shad Chai will be here at Thai Fight. Sis suck it. Oh, right hands for days. Seventh bout of the evening, and you are looking at Christian Pastore, 32 years of age from Argentina, 172 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 47 fights, 33 victories, 13 losses, and one draw. Former Muay Thai champion of Argentina in 2017. Now introducing his opponent there in your screens, PTT Valru Wong. Nicknamed the Dangerous Shark of Chunri Province. His real name is Wan Chalum Fang Dan Klang, 24 years of age, 78 centimeters tall from Padia City, Thailand. It's a total of 160 fights, 130 victories, 29 losses, and one draw. And of course, uh, the Susu Cup Tournament Champion, the Susu Cup Super Fight Champion, a Thai Fight Champion, a Thai Fight Kachuk Champion, my goodness. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah, indeed. I think it's fair to say. PTT, of course, possesses huge knockout power. And he's coming up against Christian Pastore, nicknamed Super Saiyan. Will he actually go Super Saiyan, though, with this fight? He's going to have to. <laughs> Absolutely. His other nickname, of course, Dragon Ball. <laughs> fan to say he's a fan of Dragon Ball. <laughs> I think... Uh, yeah, Pastore was actually a late replacement for... Uh, Soda, was it? Soda, so Chiet. Yeah, from uh, around Tuesday, we believe, that... Uh, that switch was made and enter Pastore, who has fought here on Thai Fight before when he took on Sanchai. He was doing really well until Sanchai broke his rib. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the and public the might fight. not know that, but that's exactly what happened. Oh, swinging right then there from PTT. Pastore clips the right hand of his own. PTT already cornering Christian Pastore. Christian Pastore is still trying to fight back, though. Lots of venom in that right hand, though, coming from PTT. And what a shot there thrown by Pastore. Venom is correct, which is also the name of the gym that he trains out of. Oh, absolutely. In Padia City, Thailand, of course. Story, really, throwing down here. Going like for like with the dangerous PTT. Good left knee there from PTT. Christian Pastore didn't seem to like that knee coming in from PTT. Perhaps PTT might want to throw some more. He's really swinging with that overhand right, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, good uppercut there from BTT. And we've seen him swing like before and get caught in the process. Oh! But not going to happen this time. And Pastore is down. And, and out. And it's all over. Oh, my goodness. Another. Eyes glazed into the back of the head there from Pastore. I have to see what shot that actually did that. It happened so fast. And it's another first round stoppage victory for PTT. Oh, 
such an amazing fighter at such a young age, 24 years of age. He really has, he really does have dynamite in those hands. The TNT of PTT strikes again and explodes. Turn themselves into champions. Including Gitli as well. Yep, Gitli is one of his teammates and of course they also grew up in the same gym previously. Here we go. Oh, looks like it was the uppercut. Nope. Overhand right behind the ear. Yeah, it was a the glaze, overhand right, a, I think it was. A glazing right hand. Let's see that one more time. This one. I think it must have just been a combination of all the uh, shots that he was taking combined together. Let's see if we can see more clearly from this angle here. A beautiful right uppercut there from PTT. I believe that was an earlier shot. That right hand connected, flush. Nothing there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where it came from, right. the right hand to the head. I think his head actually hit his shoulder. If we can see that again. There, boom. That's when you know it's all over. If that happens, it's lights out. Let's take a look at that shot one oh, more time. There's no goodness. stopping that. That is nasty. Beautiful thing. The winner is... Matata Waruti Rebel from Thailand! Good evening, come on! Moving on to the eighth bout of the evening. In the white corner, Tun Min Lat, 24 years of age from Myanmar, 186 centimeters tall, weighed in at 79 kilograms with a professional record of 38 fights, 15 victories, three losses, and 20 draws. Why does he have 20 draws? Because he is traditionally a left way fighter, and in the rules of left way, if you do not win the fight by a knockout, it is declared a draw. So the most important stat to look at there is 38 fights with only three losses. He is a strong and talented fighter. Now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the black corner, he goes by the name of Deng Deng Sitje Sai Rung, real name Eka Pan. Sombun Sap, 29 years of age, 180 centimeters tall from Nakhon Sawan province in the central part of Thailand. He's a total of 108 fights, 90 victories, 14 losses and 4 draws. It's going to be an interesting fight here of course. Tan Min Lat coming from a very famous left way or traditional Myanmar boxing family. His older brother being Tan Tan Min. Tan Tan Min of course who was uh, the left way golden belt champion at one point of his life. Of course, it's such a prestigious honor to have. So you can see there, Deng Nung, 77 kilograms. Tun Min Lat has been given a two kilogram weight advantage, 79 kilograms. Not sure if you're able to see the camera, but um, Tun Min Lat was uh, performing the Leko Muon, of course. It's like the Y crew of Myanmar, so, so, so to speak. I think that's the best way I could uh, describe it. So definitely bringing Myanmar traditional boxing here to the Thai fight ring. Of course, in left way. It's roped hands, taped hands, but you can also use headbutts. Of course, you cannot do that in Muay Thai. And you can win by points here in Thai fight and in Muay Thai, but not in Myanmar. Yeah, we saw him backstage and uh, he's a big, big boy. Oh, absolutely. And like we said, um, he's got a two kilo weight advantage against Ding Dong to Jesai Rung. And you can see it, can't you? He's, he's big. Oh, absolutely. He's actually been training um, with one of the fighters we saw early on in the card. He's been training with uh, Falikit, who of course has also been fighting left weight. An issue here with the Ding Dong's Cup, it seems. Perhaps we need to get that sorted right now. The well, referee's just telling him to go outside and fix it, but he says he can carry on. Beautiful low kick there from Deng Nung to Jay Sai Rook. Another low kick from the man from the Konsa one. Good left hand there from Deng Nung. And then to the body. Some huge body shot there from Deng oh! And a huge head kick there My from Deng Nung to Jay Sai Rook. And it doesn't look like Tung Min Lat has got to get up. 
seems comfortable there on the floor. No, he gets right back up. He says he wants to continue, and why not? These left wing fighters, man, they are tough. Not sure what Damon was trying that time. No. Probably trying to go for the 100,000. There's bucks. a left hand kick again and down. Almost hits the referee as well. For a second and final time, that it's all over. And of course, in left wing, you get two minutes to try and get yourself back to your feet. Not in my time. Not in my time. That is the end of the fight. Congratulations to Tengning, Sijes Tyrung. And a good effort there from Tunmin Lat. He's looking better than ever. Absolutely. Let's take a look of Tengning's handiwork. It's that left high kick smash. Even though Tunmin Lat had his hand up to try and block that, it wasn't enough. And down he went. Then Tengning found that opening and once again found the spot and Tunmin Lat was unable to answer the count. The referee decided to take the gum shield out. Fair to say, uh, and that's Tunmin Lat not, not so lucky, but the referee extremely lucky there not to catch a kick from Tengning. Tengning, powerful. I mean, Tunmin Lat is back on his feet here, but he still, he still looks a bit dazed, Kevin. And it's that high kick there from Tengden that finished the fight. I can't remember the last time we saw him finish a fight with a high kick. Well, what do we say? Are we going to ask Big Brother to come in and challenge Tengden? I could bet that Tun Tun Min is definitely looking at this fight. He might not want it after watching that. <laughs> <laughs> or he might want it even more. 38 fights. He's only lost three times in left way, which is unbelievable. What that technique from Deng Nung. Incredible. Amazing. Known for his hands. 100% known for the power. The winner is Deng Nung Sitges Ayerung from Thailand. Yeah. 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 Now time for your main event of the evening in the white corner from Argentina, Mr. Alan Chowney, 25 years of age, 173 centimeters tall. With a professional record of 32 fights, 23 victories, with eight losses and one draw. An Argentinian Muay Thai champion, as well as an ISKA champion. And of course, now it's time to introduce his opponent in the black corner representing Mahasarokam province in northeastern part of Thailand, Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. His real name is Superchai Sanpong, 41 years of age, 263 centimeters tall. He's had a total of 376 fights, 325 victories, 49 losses, and two draws. Of course, he's a two time Sports Writers Association of Thailand Fighter of the Year Award winner, and he's also a three division Lupini. Champion. He's also the Thai Fight Champion 2019, 18, 17, and the Kachuk Champion 2016. He's done it all, hasn't he, Sanchai? He has. And not only that, remember, he's now what? How old? 41 years of 41 age. 41 years of age, exactly. He fought this month already. Yes, he has. At <laughs> <laughs> the beginning Incredible. of this month. Two fights in one month. Sanchai can do it all. And fought against uh, Ali Doratsian. And won by knockout. That's right, in the second round with a beautiful knee. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if uh, Chowney has spotted that, if he's been working on some skills some, to try and count what, count, uh, what Sanchai can produce. And that knee might cause him some worry because he has been throwing it a lot recently. Absolutely, a lot of cheers for Sanchai here. Of course, he is also from the Isan region, exactly where we are right now, Sisakian province. Interesting start there from Sanchai. He does the switch up. Very famous for that, of course. We've already seen an Argentinian compete in the tie fight ring here tonight against PTT with not much success. Now down to Chowney to try and restore some national pride. 
you gotta love the composure that that Ch Choni is showing so far, but oh, question mark kick. As we know, it doesn't really last long because Sanchai seems to figure out his opponents quite fast. Sanchai now on the back foot. Choni with the reach advantage. Yeah, Chowney 173 centimeters tall, so 10 centimeter height advantage apparently. Looks a little bit more, doesn't it, when they come come face to face? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he's holding his own so far. Trying to go for a high kick there, Sanchai, but a good evasion by Alan Choney. Good block there from Sanchai as Chowney tries to go for the legs. Sanchai looking for that sweep. Swing and a miss that time. Good evasion there from the Argentinian fighter. Goes into the clinch. Maybe not where you want to be against, oh. against Sanchai, because that's exactly what will happen. Beautiful sweep there from the legend. Head almost drilled into the canvas that time. Oh, beautiful left kick to the body. Finally Outside hitting its kick. mark. Yeah, just under the arm. Kick there from Sanchai. Maybe just blocked there from Allen. Alan Chowney though still looking very composed, but receives a kick once again from Sanchai. I don't know what it is, but a lot of fighters when they get into the ring with Sanchai, they seem to be drawn into Sanchai's game. I don't think that's exactly what's going on with Allen right now. Because if you're gonna try to beat him with technical superiority, you're never gonna do that ever. Beautiful kick from the Argentinian, nonetheless. Old man right from Sanchai. Now trying to back up Chowney. And a round one. Coming into our second round of our final bout of the evening. Of course, Sanchai in the black corner. And Alan Chowney from Argentina. Tina, excuse me, Argentina in the white corner. And Aaron, after seeing that display, if you're the corner man of Alan, what would you tell him? Be a little bit more aggressive, take a little bit more risk. He was doing okay in the first round. He was just trying to circle away from Sanchai and just find his moments. So I think it's fair to say, don't don't play the technical game with Sanchai because you're never going to win that one. I think we might see that here in the second round now. But yeah, change gears now. I think you showed what you can do in the first round. Now it's just up the tempo a little bit more. Good left hand there from Sanchai. Good body shot. Oh, good left hand there from Sanchai. And Sanchai has just turned it on. Some beautiful combinations put together from Sanchai. PK, Sanchai, Moise, Jim. Low kick there. Looking for that left hand. Chowney just able to move out the way. Yeah, the Argent Argentines on the ropes now. No, we didn't. We mentioned, didn't we, at the, uh, before the start of the fight, that Sanchai's knees are starting to, you know, play a big role in the way he fights. He hasn't thrown one yet. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but perhaps he will. Inside kick there from Sanchai. Sanchai is definitely one of the most unpredictable fighters in the game today and throughout history, really. And another beautiful kick connecting there for the legend. I'm quite impressed the way Chowney is able to move backwards on his feet. Yeah, looking very slim with his footwork. But right. right now he starts to, he needs to start throwing some combinations as well. Oh, he moved forward and caught a left hand there from Sanchai. Or has to throw some shots because he's on the ropes once again, somewhere where he doesn't want to be. Sanchai is finding a hole for that left hand to the body. There it is again on Chowney. And he moves up top. Sanchai once again beat the fighter as moving forward. I think Chowney was asking the referee to remove his Prajit there, but the referee wasn't having any of it. No, definitely not. You're still in the middle of the fight. That's the first thing you've got to focus on is your opponent. Body shot there from Sanchai. Looking for the oh, Valero gets caught with the right hand and a right kick. Good technical stuff there from Chowney. It's a beautiful combination there put by the Argentinian fighter. He needs to do more of that though. Push kick from Sanchai. Then another body shot. This time with that kick. Oh, solid slick left hand there from the goal. And now Chowney moving forward now. He gets kicked once again, Alan Chowney. Cartwheel kick! Great. 
It's not a Sunshine fight without seeing that, and it uh, looks like Alan is almost starstruck after Sunshine threw that. Possibly thinking to yourself every single day, will I ever receive a <laughs> cartwheel kick from Sanchai? And there we go, end of the second round of our final battle of the evening. The first and second round is in the books and one more round left to go. Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moisai Jim in the black corner and Alan Chowney from Argentina in the white corner. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that second round. The best shot that Alan as he threw in that round was that right hook to Sanchai. Best throughout the rest of the fight, let's take a look at that. Our wheel kick there from Sanchai. Sanchai didn't seem to be having any problems at all with his opponent. I've actually been quite impressed. Same. A lot of opponents who take on Sanchai seem to have a lot of problems. Well, uh, there's some of them as well. I think they decide that they just want to go the distance. Yeah. You know, that's a win in itself. I think that's what Chown is playing today. He's starting to move forward though. Well, yeah. Oh! Right hook there from Chowney, low kick. And a good block there from the Argentine fighter as well. Moving back and forth. Very oh, well done there left. from the Argentine. But ultimately receives a kick once again from Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moitai Jim, and what a left hand as well. Chowney whipping that right high kick up with ease. Right hook there from Sanchai. 41 years of age, but the speed is still there. Solid right hand. Go for a low kick there, or perhaps a sweep by Sanchai. Beautiful body kick there by Sanchai once again. And again. And trying to go for a sweep and almost successful if it wasn't for the ropes. You know what Tai Comites would say, if there wasn't any ropes there, he'd be out of the ring. Good defense there from Sanchai. A very interesting maneuver there from the Argentine fighter. Sanchai still moving forward, trying to take it to Chowney. He has found a hole for that inside left kick. Quite a lot has Sanchai. Absolutely, another beautiful kick there from Sanchai once again, and he's connected so many of those kicks. You can see Sanchai happy just to go Chowney in that time and caught him with a left hand. Now he's moving forward. Swing in, left hand almost connects. I think it did connect there, in fact. Almost connects flush. Oh. <laughs> Good body shot again from Sanchai. Hasn't slowed down from the first to the third round. And there's round. the first knee, in fact. Yep. Oh, the swinging left. Oh, Sanchai just controlling the match now. Oh, there's that left again. Right to the mouth of Chowney. This has become the Sanchai show here in the third round of our main event of the evening. Sanchai fighting the way he wants to. Again, body shot. Two body shots there from Sanchai. Perhaps another one coming up pretty soon. A good block there from Chowney. There it is. Oh, and the left hand snaps Chowney's head back. Beautiful switch kick there from the legend. End of the third and final round. Beautiful display of Muay Thai actually from both fighters. I really enjoyed that one. We will go to the judges, of course, but you have to say, Sanchai with the Muay Thai clinic to finish the proceedings there. An amazing Thai fight, Sisaket. A good matchup. I mean, Allen versus uh, Max Brannis. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Exactly. I really was. Good left knee from Sanchai there. He pretty much was in control the whole fight. And I think he actually dominated in the third round as well. Left hand there. Yeah, it did connect, but not connect flush, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> they go right to the eye for good measure. Still performing at 41, fighting twice a month. And the kids have finished the fight. You say it looks like. Some of Kone, Posenat, Daika! Sanchai Pike, Sanchai, Moi Tayyip, Hon, Moi Hansayam! Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moi Tai Jim. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Thai Fight. Now we'll not see you again until October time. I'm Aaron Sui Sompan, joined by Kevin Armlid. We'll see you again at Thai Fight.